Let's light it up, let's light it up until our hearts catch fire. Then show the world a burning light that never shines so bright. We'll find a way, we'll find a way to keep the cold night from breaking in over the walls onto the other side. A hunger satisfied. Burning up, we might as well be lovers on the sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we might as well be lovers on the sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we might as well be lovers on the sun. We'll never know, we'll never know what stands behind the door. Well, I got a feeling, it's a feeling that's worth dying for. Just close your eyes and hold your breath because it feels right. We'll keep it moving till we make it to the other side. And let's enjoy the ride. Burning up, we might as well be lovers on the sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we might as well be lovers on the sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we might as well be lovers on the sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we might. Let's light it up, let's light it up until our hearts catch fire And show the world a burning light that never shone so bright When the world changed and went into lockdown, my place of solace was at the top of a hill in the country, a long way from the road trips and gigs and more road trips and more gigs. It didn't take long before I was missing it all. No one could go more than two kilometers from their home, so with only mountains as an audience, I started to do what I do, uh, play music. At first, it felt like singing into a void, but it made everything feel a little more normal, whatever that is, was, or will be. These concerts were my postcards from the edge, my way of expressing myself and singing the body electric. And it turned out that while I was out in the wilderness, I wasn't the only one feeling this way. People would respond with their messages, requesting songs, saying hello to loved ones in a foreign land, sharing stories of joy and sadness. It's this experience and these postcards from the edge that have inspired this new program. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm ready to get out, to meet people again, to chat, and find out how they got on and what got them through. That's what the show is all about, meeting real people and sharing their stories. And of course, there will be lots of music and crack along the way. Greetings, everybody. Well, don't say I don't keep you guessing. I bet you never thought you'd hear me singing a David Guetta song. Guetta, is that how you said? Uh, it was a dance tune. Uh, what a great song. So, hi, folks, and welcome to Postcards from the Edge, episode two. I hope you're all doing well, and thanks for tuning in. And thankfully, there are more live gigs each week now, and thanks to everybody who came out to see uh, me here in Stradbally. Uh, we had a great night on Sunday night with the great... Uh, musicians from the uh, from from Leash and 
It's been great seeing you all again. So um, hopefully I'll see you more over the next coming weeks. Uh, one from last week. Happy birthday, Barbara Bannon. Um, hope you had a good one. Uh, it's been a mad week for me. I just announced the Three Arena gig on the 25th of November 2022. The tickets went on sale today, so thanks to everybody who's buying the tickets. So, uh, and the rest of you, uh, get in there early if you can, that'd be great. Um, always nice to have something to look forward to. Um, it could make a great birthday gift or Christmas present, whatever. Uh, anyway, over the recent months, we found ourselves reinventing ourselves and taking up new things, connecting to one another using technologies like Zoom, hosting virtual quizzes, shopping online, uh, cooking loads of good food and learning how to make sourdough bread and banana bread. That was the big one too, wasn't it? Um, going online shopping for toilet paper, that was big too. So uh, good things came from this odd time too. And it's only now that we can start to imagine a post-pandemic life being normal again. Uh, brings up its own challenges. We have all been through some kind of existential crisis and Postcards from the Edge is uh, about all of us really and hopefully learning to grow together after that trauma, post-traumatic growth if you will. So remember we want to hear from you. Please do send us your emails, uh, your messages, your TikToks, videos, poems, carrier pigeons, papyrus, paintings and if it's how you express yourself then we want to see it or hear it, and you can uh, be anonymous if you prefer, that's fine. You can use a, a, a fake name like me. And you don't have to wait. This is not a recording. Yes, we really are live. So message us now, please do, on the various platforms that we are on. Uh, the plan for this series is that each week we are going to examine a different theme, diversity and inclusion, or youth on hold. But this week it's pastimes and we are going to chat about some of your hobbies or activity, activities you got up to during lockdown. Uh, there's a message coming in here, uh, a postcard from Siobhan Warren on Twitter. What a year for me and mine, a year today, 23rd, since I became a grandma to Alva. I, think, I hope I said that right. Um, very few visits because of the virus and I had cancer. Uh, uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, all clear now, good to hear that. Siobhan, all vaccinated. Time for birthday cake later with my darling Angel Buttercup. That's it's lovely to hear. Thanks, Siobhan, for the message. Hope you're well. And here's one from Mary Cullen. Uh, hi, Mary. I work part-time in a small pharmacy uh, where we, we really know our customers, and it was great to be able to chat to them and sometimes reassure them. Hopefully, we in the pharmacy made a, a bit of a difference. Well, thanks a million, Mary. I think people working in the shops are the real superheroes. So thanks from all of us for all you guys doing what she did um, and are doing. Uh, so this message was sent, postcard from Kathleen Sheridan. And I'll have to edit it a bit to fit it in. Apologies, Kathleen. Hello, Jack. I'd like to tell you about an organization in our area, the SVT Activity and Wellness Hub, a vibrant, energetic, inclusive hub that links three communities in the rural areas of County Lee, Stradbally, Vickerstown and Timahoe. The hub, run by volunteers, promotes physical activities in the areas while also aiming to ensure that the mental, mental health, well-being and social needs of the community are reflected. Our greatest lockdown legacy is our cycle group. Uh, we formed a group that have gone out cycling twice a week throughout the pandemic when restrictions allowed. Everyone with two wheels is welcome. The group has steadily grown and most evenings we would have about 25 to 30 people. We cover 30 k's a night and nobody gets left behind. We have people on electric bikes and we have facilitated people with visual and physical impairment with tandems. That's fantastic. Uh, we are as much about the social contact and mental health, health benefits as we are about the physical benefits. Anyone that is interested in joining us can contact us on face our Facebook page. So thanks for letting us know, Kathleen. And that's exactly the sort of community spirit we're talking about here on Postcards from the Edge. Well, for me, outside of learning hundreds of songs for you all and playing them on the, the live stream lockdown shows uh, during the pandemic, um, I also tried to brush up my Irish on the Duolingo app, which I have to say is very good for any languages you want to learn. But uh, but I fell off the wagon eventually, and my Irish is as pigeon as ever. But uh, I'll get back on it. 
Uh, I also started doing a lot of exercise classes with a group online in San Francisco. Uh, I did dance classes or two with a friend in Canada. Um, so lots can be done now online, different places on the earth, all across the planet, which is mind blowing. It's mad when you think about all the marvelous tech. I also did a fair bit of hiking and cycling in the real world and definitely felt the benefits of exercise and getting the blood flowing. Uh, well, anyway, back to tonight. Uh, now, this may not be your typical concert, just like last week. There's going to be plenty of music from our postcards, postcards from the Edge performance space in Stradbally, as well as lots of chat with guests. In the meantime, here's how you can get in touch. Hi, this is Jack Lukeman, and I'm looking for your pandemic stories for my new web show, Postcards from the Edge. Please send me your poems, songs, messages, videos, or even just a request digitally. Tag your content online with hashtag JackLPostcards or send a message to any of the accounts shown here. To post your postcards free of charge, send them to Postcards from the Edge, P.O. Box 13420, Free Post, FDN 7530, Dublin 2. You know I'd love to read your power I used to think I was some kind of gypsy boy Before I let you take me home Now so green lilac park You held on to me like I was a crucifix As we went kneeling through the door Beside me now, and why do I feel so alone? I'm standing on a ledge, and you find spider web is fastening my ankles to a stone.
If you put a man into a nursing home, he climbs up because he's in a, a woman's environment. But if you put a man into a shed, he'll do something with his hands or talk. We all want to just feel like we've, we feel a sense of belonging. We want to be part of something. I retired two years ago and I found that after working nearly 40 years of my life, where do I go from here? Men don't talk face to face, but they do shoulder to shoulder. There's so many different people with different skills and the electrician with, and the carpenter and they all, everyone helps everybody and you learn new skills and learn new ideas. I'm not terribly social, but um, I find that it helps my mental health. I think that we're one of the bigger links of partnerships we're in the community and voluntary sector. It's not exclusive, it's inclusive. Well over 90% of the men will say their health and well-being has improved by being a member of a men's shed. But it's much more than that. Think about all their families. Think about 10,000 men out there every week going to a shed. And think of their families at home and the impact it's having on their family life. And it brings us slightly closer to the type of society we all would like to live in. And that's one where everyone's included, everyone feels part of it, and we look out for each other and we help each other along the way. You feel useful, wanted, again. You're not just thrown in a chair on the side of a, in the corner of a, a room someplace. Well, if you like the Leonard Cohen song I sang, uh, it's on the Best of the Lockdown album on jacklukeman.com. It's not on any of those dodgy streaming sites. Uh, so, do you saw the men's shed there. Uh, Andy Egan from the Irish Men's Shed was supposed to be joining us. But uh, sadly, he had a power cut. We had him live and everything, but he had a power cut. So we'll try and get him on again, and uh, hopefully all the guys can get together from the men's shed and fix the electricity. <laughs> uh, I also went, went, went to meet uh, Kevin Scully, a friend of mine, who is an organic oat farmer with a, a love of poetry. He also runs the Merry Mill, an online business selling specialized oat products. Um, he was keen to show me his new project, a bee therapy hut, which he has made out of a disused horse box. Uh, I was buzzing after this, so see what you think. So I'm here with Kevin Scully of the Merry Mill, uh, organic farmer extraordinaire, known to recite a poem here and there, and uh, uh, beekeeper, you name it. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing fantastic. What do you call this? Do you call so, it the... the, the, the <laughs> like, this is our oat mill. Oat mill. Yeah. So the blueprint for this is in the 1800s, the whole style, saying, so it's yeah. all levers. So that was the height of technology in the 1800s? That was the height, so. that's where milling was at. That was the height of technology. Very, that would have been driven by water, mm. and they just changed and put an electric motor, so this one's run right. by three-phase okay. power. Yeah, so, so we're asking people, you know, how did they, was it music, was it poetry, was it, I mean, what, what were the things, was it keeping busy that kept you going? Yeah, busy and then I have a huge interest in poetry and music. Mm. So definitely got into listening to an awful lot of tunes. Yeah. You like coming down here, putting in their pods, just yeah. got more immersed in music and in spoken word. I love spoken word. Yeah. So actually out of the pandemic, I think my whole um, listening and all that went to a complete different level yeah, of, yeah. and appreciation because it's only yeah. when it's gone you miss it it's only when Absolutely, you yeah. don't have access to a live venue and the energy mm. from a performer and from a crowd mm. when you're in that Absolutely yeah I think uh, hopefully people have reevaluated how precious it all is you know music and I think I think you see a huge upsurge when things open up again people going back to live venues just because mm. you crave that yeah, you, you, yeah. as I say We've community, been yeah. Yes, community, yeah. It's that community spirit. It's when you're with four or five thousand like minded people all following the same artist, mm. all knowing the words of the same yeah. song, yeah. all in tandem. That energy is created in that zone. That mm. There's a special energy there. Yeah. So, Kevin, you have, a, you have a lot of bees as well, and you keep bees. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, a huge interest in bees. I got into beekeeping maybe five, six years ago. And then during the pandemic, I was reading stuff online about bee therapy huts. Now, yeah. There's, there's some in America, there's a few around the world. Mm. So we created one here on the farm. This, this is where, this is where oh, it's lovely, yeah. Lovely so space. This, this is the concept here. So the bees, 
are in under here. Now, she's not full yet. We have, we have a small hive there and a bigger hive here. When she's full, there'll be three full hives and there'll be about 150,000 bees underneath you. Wow. Like at the moment, there's about 15,000. So there'll be a really good micro vibration when we have her full up. Right, but yeah. jump on her there, yeah, Jack. Yeah, and yeah I, I like when I, if I meditate, I hum a lot. I, I find yeah. humming very relaxing. I'm trying to see what key they're humming in at the moment. <laughs> You hum along to it. <laughs> so I come down here twice a day and I just focus on the sound of the bees. So I lie down there and I just listen to the sound. And once you yeah. hear it then, it starts building up. And if you only can do that for a minute or two minutes, I try and do five minutes where yeah. my whole brain is just focused on listening to the bees. Yeah, yeah. And it feels so refreshing because it's the same as meditation. Your, your brain yeah. is focused on one thing, it stops thinking. And it's all about distracting, I think, your brain yeah. away from other things. So yeah, if you yeah. pick up, I did just lie down, pick up a stone, pull it there, put my hand, and then I'm feeling the texture of the stone. And then I'm trying to get my brain just yeah, to yeah, yeah feel and sense yes, rather yeah, than yeah. think. Erin is getting horse box and selling coffee out of a nice and let's, let's go for peas in a horse box. Let's go for peas in a horse box. This is a, <laughs> a more simpler idea. Well, Kevin, we're here and you're cutting the oats at the moment. I've tasted the beautiful porridge that you uh, have supplied with me over time. Um, so this is all, no, no, no pesticides, nothing, just completely organic. Yeah, it's completely organic. So this was sown now in October, completely chemical free, no chemical fertilizers, no per pesticides, no herbicides. This is grown in complete harmony with nature. Mother, yes. Mother nature, we stick this in the ground. Yeah. And Mother Nature looks after it, but the trick is getting the soil healthy. It works the same as your gut. Healthy soil yes. keeps the plant healthy or healthy. Yes. Gut keeps our body healthy. We would know each other from maybe getting together now and then and having a session here, yeah. and, uh, here and there. And uh, you're always a good man to recite an old poem. So I wonder if you'd like to give us a little bit of something while we're walking here on this yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, I have a little poem. It's probably very fitting in the pandemic. It's written by Emily Dickinson and it goes like this. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches on the soul. It sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Sweet is in the gale is heard. Sore must be the storm that could abash that little bird that kept so many warm. I heard it in the strangest land and on the wildest sea, but never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Woo, beautiful. <laughs> Gonna frighten the crows away with applause. Yeah, get the crows, get the crows <laughs> Beautiful. Fantastic. Maybe you're 
You're the reason why all the doors are closed So you can open one that lead you to a perfect road Like a lightning bolt Your heart will glow And when the time it comes you will know You just gotta ignite the light And let it shine Just so Shoot across the sky, sky, sky Boom, boom, boom Even brighter than the moon, moon, moon. It's always been inside of you Now it's time to let it throw Cause baby, you're on fire your colors burst, make them go hop, 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 as you shoot across the sky, baby, all the fireworks, come on, let your colors burst, make them go hop, 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 as you shoot Sky, sky, sky Boom, boom, boom Even brighter than a moon It's always been inside of you Now it's time to let it throw There you go, folks, another pop-tastic tune for you pop-pickers out there. I think Paul McCartney said it was one of his favorite tunes over the last few years. Uh, that's Firework by Katy Perry. Now, my guest this week is a very special writer who manages to combine humor and wisdom in her novels. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Anna McPartlin. <laughs> so, welcome, Anna. Thanks for having me, amigo. Thanks for joining me here. Uh, my first question is, for a bonus point, how long do we know each other? <laughs> Too long. Too long. So you were 13 was it? when I met you. I was 14. Right. So I'm older than yes, you. Yes, yes. And wiser. Yes, of course. And uh, yeah, we met in a Thai. Mm -hmm. I was visiting with a you pal. You used to come on holidays, was Yeah, it? yeah. I used to, a pal of mine was a pal of yours. Mm -hmm. And I used to come and see her and we met. What was that? the name of that coffee shop that you used to hang out in oh, every single uh, day? The Country Kitchen. The Country Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Met you in the Country Kitchen with all the lads. Yeah. And then, I don't know, we hung out and we got to know each other. And then I think by the time you were about 15 and a half, maybe, I heard you sing for the first time. All oh, right, right. And you had that voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the body of a child. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so and it was weird. weird. Yeah, when, I, when I used to sing in music class in school, everybody used to laugh. <laughs> People because it was so weird. They freak out. So low, it was yeah. bananas. Yeah. I remember just being, <laughs> what, what was that? Yeah. And it was extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been lucky to make something of it. As you have too. Uh, was it a, 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 a thing for you that you wanted to be a writer? Was that always a thing? So I never thought I could be a writer because back in the day, in 100 years ago when we were kids, do you remember in school, like, it wasn't a thing. I want to be a writer. And they'd be like, yeah, you do, love. Mm. You know, you'll be a secretary or you might be a nurse if you're mm. lucky. I did comedy for a while. 
Well, I did. I started off doing acting mm. and I hated it mm. and I wasn't particularly good at it and I had no passion for it. So then I moved into the stand up comedy yeah. and I really enjoyed that. But I didn't like the performance as much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. You light up when you perform and you come alive. And I didn't. And it was really annoying because I banged on to everybody about I wanted to be a performer. Turns out when I got to be one, I didn't I didn't mm. like it. I um, didn't enjoy it. And we did a fantastic thing. Uh, I don't know what year that was, but uh, when we used to do uh, Best Medicine, <laughs> which was we used to, we were taught how to uh, they would bring people in to teach us acting, puppetry, yeah. uh, miming, music. Yeah. Um, and it was actors and musicians. Yeah. And we would be thought up in Finlater's church up at the end of O'Connell Street. And then at the weekends, we would go around to the uh, children's hospital and entertain the kids. Yeah, we the did kids. three gigs a week. Three gigs a week, yeah. I used to do a mean, ugly duckling. <laughs> you did. Yeah. And do you remember I was really peeved? Because I brought you into that when I got you to come up to Dublin and I got you a yeah. job and stuff. And I got you a job and you paid me back by taking the wool from the three little pigs from me. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I yeah. was like, I became the wolf. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd call that. Man. <laughs> And, uh, I, uh, and of course, I was privileged for you to uh, write a book called So What If I'm Broken, where you right. it involved uh, a story of f uh, fans of mine following yeah, me around. So basically, the story was based on uh, a fan of yours goes missing and another fan of yours gets caught, I think, in a lift with the husband and he's looking every gig. He puts up posters mm -hmm. wherever you're playing. He puts up posters of his wife and um, to try and find her. And every chapter was the a lyric from your song or the name of your song. Yes, and that was really cool. Yeah, Thanks and then yeah. some and a couple of lyrics just to give a tone for the for the thing. And I really enjoyed that actually because I listened to everything you'd done up to that point as I was writing it, and that's all I listened to while I was writing the book. Oh, so it was just like all your good. CDs over well, and over again. again. Yeah. Well. Thanks a million for doing that. You're and so welcome. The, the book is still available, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Anna's going to hang out for the crack. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to perform another little number. The next song is one with my good friend, uh, Irish Parisian musical master Paddy Sherlock on the trombone. And, of course, the effervescent M.D. Cronin. So relax and enjoy this, and we'll be back with you in a moment. But uh, we, we arrived here literally one week before the lockdown measure started. And so uh, moving to Ireland for us was uh, basically an experience that was supposed to open a lot of doors and was supposed to, to give us a lot of uh, different experiences. So Paddy Sherlock on the trouble that is just That's what all the people say You're riding high in April Shot down in May But I know I'm gonna change that tune When I'm back on top Back on top in June Oh, said that's life And funny as it may seem Some creeps get their kicks Stomping on a dream, but I don't ever let it get me down. Cause this fine old world keeps spinning around. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and now, but I know one thing. Each time I find myself laying. Flat on my face, I just pick myself up and get back in the race that's life. And I can't deny it. I thought I quit, baby, but my heart just won't buy it. But if there's nothing, should you come this in July? I jump right on a big old bird and then I fly. Been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and out, baby. But I know one thing. Each 
Each time I find myself laying flat on my face, I just pick myself up and get back in the race that's life. And I can't deny it. Well, I thought I couldn't, baby, but my heart just won't buy it. But if there's nothing shaking, come this in July. I'm gonna roll myself up in a big bowl and die. Brilliant. That was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it was fun to do. Um, well, we're going to. Uh, I've got a few more questions here for you. Anna. Okay. Um, well, I took to singing on Facebook every Saturday night during COVID, and everything stopped for me as a writer. Um, did your professional writing life change, or did you find it? Some found it inspiring. Others kind of it just didn't help with the whole process. I, fa I found for me not being able to. The h half of it is going out and meeting people that makes me do things, you know, inspires right. things. How about yourself? I was really lucky because I was doing a lot of TV development. So as a result, what was great about it for me was that normally when I'm doing TV development, I'm in a hotel somewhere, whether it's the UK or Ireland or wherever the hell I'm doing it. I'm in a hotel for a week with about four other writers and you're head down all day, every day in this place. And you do this development project and hope it gets on TV. For me, I could do it on Zoom. So I was working with the Canadian writer, um, two people in the UK, all at the same time, working every single day. Um, then I, I, I was doing about five or six different projects. So I was focused because each project was a different thing. And it was like... You usually travel to do these things. I have so. to travel. Yeah. So I was doing them from my kitchen, mm -hmm. which was extraordinary. And I loved that, actually, because I'm quite a lazy person. So I don't like to have to schlep about, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I have to say, uh, doing the live streams is good as well, not, for, not having to travel aspect. Yeah. But not having to go to war with some airline every time you went off to do a gig. Or yeah, whatever, you know? yeah, so yeah. Nice. Or run around the tube just for get, most of the yeah, day, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It was nice to just get up and be able to walk somewhere to the studio and be able to do it. Um, your personal life changed a lot. You had folks move in with you uh, and live with you. So yeah. how was that? That was magic. Yeah. <laughs> so it's magic. So my at the start of the pandemic, nobody knew what was going on. Mm. And some people were talking about kids being vectors. And my sister-in-law, her husband and their three kids had just moved in mm -hmm. with my father-in-law and they were buying his house and he's going to live in with them. But they were buying the house and they were going to extend the house. But as it was, the house was too small for everyone. So the minute the pandemic came along, everyone was like, oh, my God, the kids might kill my dad. So right. Rebecca said to us, you know, and we were like, we'll take them, we'll take them. So we took the two older ones. We took the 21 year old and the 15 year old at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was magic. So basically the big joke because the 15 year olds was like the 21 year old and his girlfriend moved in. So they were kind of doing their own thing, living mm -hmm. their own life. But I had the 15 year old. <laughs> I wasn't let go. I was like, you're mine now, Bill. <laughs> So all the sister-in-laws used to joke because every Saturday we'd bake, you know, mm -hmm. so we'd bake something and then we'd put a fake shopping bag in the front of the car mm -hmm. and we'd pretend that we were going to bring shopping to somebody, a legal action. And instead we'd go and we'd drop cakes off to his mother and his family and then my other sister-in-law, Ruth, and her family. We didn't go inside the house. We didn't break anything, but we just hand put the cake on the bin, on the wheelie bin outside the house. And then we spoke to them for a few minutes. And every t every Saturday, I'd take photographs of us. And my sister-in-law, Ruth, kept saying, look, Bill's like a hostage in the photos. I'm like this. And he's like, help me. 
<laughs> it was like that's three cool. months I had him for. Well, that's cool. That's something positive. Oh, anyway. it was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. Well, um, over the next few weeks, we're going to be spotlighting various up and coming musicians and hearing their postcards from the Edge stories too. First up is Leo Hofnug, uh, all the way from Brazil via Argentina, and this is his postcard. from Brazil, um, but I lived 12 years in Argentina, where I met my beautiful wife, and I've been living here in Ireland for one year and a half, most. Most of this experience has been under COVID, so very nice. But uh, we, we arrived here literally one week before the lockdown measure started, and so uh, moving to Ireland for us was uh, basically an experience that was supposed to open a lot of doors and was supposed to, to give us a lot of uh, different experiences. My wife got the, a job offer, a very good job offer to move here and um, I've always been a musician and in South America musicians and artists have it really rough so you can't really make a good living being a musician there. Uh, but I had the sense that here in Ireland, with the love of music that there, there is in the country and the city and everywhere, uh, it was going to be possible. I was kind of hoping for to get my, my hands into cultural works and in, in whatever kind of uh, I could get, museums, uh, bars or playing live, getting into band, whatever. And it just didn't happen in, in that way. We were constantly growing up listening to music and my dad is a big Pink Floyd fan, for instance. My mom is a big The Smiths fan, so I would grow up listening to this uh, kind of music and listening to music was an activity for us. To make things easy, I always say that I'm a jazz musician, um, but because jazz is so free, uh, it's as free as the music that I try to make in general. So. I don't really get bogged down or, or I don't really get myself into uh, stylistic uh, squares or spaces. I, I listen to very avant-garde kind of music and I try to bring elements of basically everything that I listen to. So it's jazz but you may be listening to jazz mixed with metal and it's still going to be jazz because who can argue if that's jazz or not. Um, so. Musically, I try to do that, and I am a very proud uh, Latin American person, so I try to bring in a lot of uh, uh, influences and uh, of the places that I've lived and the cultures that I've been into. So I had to learn to play several instruments just to make my musical ideas come through. So I, I was studying composition, of course, but uh, then I, I needed to have the real world experience, so I needed to put, to put bass on an idea that I had, so I didn't have a basis, so I just picked up a bass and started noodling around until I actually learned how to do something and translate the idea. The same happened with the guitar, the same happened with the drums, and at some point, even if I had a lot of uh, piano lessons, I actually, uh, most of my development has been uh, self, uh, self-thought, in a way. I, I make I can make it work solo, but if I have like-minded people, I actually enjoy it because uh, I don't want to be the one that is doing everything, and I like the input of different people. It, the idea comes, but it, it's never just a melody. It's never just a. It's the whole thing. So I know what the melody, the bass, the rhythm section. The, I know what they are gonna be like. So it's just start translating that into the reality. And sometimes it's perfect as it is, or well. It's, it's, it's what I needed to say, it's just that, and sometimes I need to rethink, rechange, reshape, and I be flexible with that. But uh, luckily now things have changed enough so that I have kind of a healthy work social life, and I am actually being able to work uh, with music, not only composing alone in my room, uh, kind of changing from a jazz guy in the attic to actually <laughs> jazz musician in the community. 
I'm just hoping to uh, for things to reopen a little bit so that I can see a little bit more of music. My, I think that my future looks like with me recording uh, more material really, and for the first time in my life releasing them into the world. I've been creating stuff, but I, I'd like to create things within a context and I'd love to be part of the context here in Ireland. I'm the king of soul Everybody knows I'm the king of soul Everybody knows Hey, boots, I'm coming Hey, listen to me I got friends everywhere From the streets of Malacca Down on Camden Street, yeah You see me coming Crown on my Every my hands still smoking, still covered so Judges, but I swore on the Bible and all those Gideons. The ladies love me, the gentlemen too. Keep your hands in your pockets, for you could help the king of soul. I'm the king of soul.
start this new thing and then literally everyone in their granny is doing a live stream. We're currently standing in Queer Mind, Body and Soul. It is a collection of artworks by 16 young LGBTQIA plus people. Well, that of course was the king of Soho. Soho from the Magic Days album. Um, so, uh, Sheila Delaney, where have I got that one? Um, I want to hear from a question for you from Sheila Delaney. Hi, Anna, big, big fan of your work. Your work is so funny. Do you plan it out in advance or how does it happen? Also, what are you working on now? Ah, oh, thanks, Sheila. Um, yeah, I, I have the characters in my head for about six months to a year, depending, and they're running around and I'm talking to myself. My husband thinks I'm having a breakdown. And then I start working on the computer and I know the first page off by heart when I start writing and I know the last page off by heart. I have a vague idea of the middle and I just get going. So, yeah. But it's all about character. So I know every single character inside and out. And then I just know where I'm starting and where it's taking me. And yes, I am working on something at the moment that I'm yeah. really excited about. It's slight, slight pivot. Not too far away from what I'm doing, but I, I am trying to get away from the break your heart model remake okay. your heart model. I just want, I don't want people to be afraid to read my books. And right now, I think post the pandemic, people are kind of a bit sick of having a broken heart. So I'm veering yeah. slightly away. Bit of joy of another uh, postcard here. Jack, Killer Seduco and your gigs kept me saying, Thomas Doyle, I'm glad God blessed you with that beautiful voice. Mm. Lindy Hall, thanks a million. Brings me right back to listening to Jack's music for the first time on a pirate radio station in the summer of 1997. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Peter Fitz, 1997. <laughs> um, so did I hear you taught some cooking classes during lockdown? Yeah, so I did. Yeah. I'm an avid home cook. And uh, when it comes to my pals, I'm always the one that does the dinner parties. Okay. Nobody else does. They're all really bad cooks. And uh, my friend Enda started it. Um, he was so bored because he's the kind of person he's like real ADHD. He's never in, at home. Like he's always meeting people. He's always out. And suddenly he was at home and he was like, chicken, I need to do something. You need to help me. You need to help me. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'll teach you how to cook. So it started off with just him. And then by the end, there was three of them. And every Saturday at seven, we'd open the bottle of wine. And I'd, during the week, I would have picked the, the recipe and then we'd go shopping and I'd help them with all of that. And then... Saturday, open the wine, and I'd basically scream at them over Zoom going, no, stir it, stir it, just keep stirring so, it. So it was just an excuse to drink, really. It was, it was drinking and stirring and, uh. oh, no, there's something wrong. No, it's fine. Just keep stirring. Just keep stirring. <laughs> Uh, and then would you all eat it together no, online? We, or no, the... because what we'd do is we'd spend about an hour and a half cooking. And then when it was ready and I was satisfied that everybody's was OK and that they weren't going to poison their partner, then we'd cut off the feed and we'd go and we'd eat with our partner. So I'd eat with Donald, he'd eat with his husband, my other friend would eat with her husband and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just really enjoyable. And now they can all cook, genuinely have a really solid repertoire and they're all cooking. Yeah, I think a lot of people, maybe, well, I, I, outside of the initial thing where I, I, we all just start eating whatever we like, kind of, I, I kind of turned it around and started eating healthy at some point and people were cooking at home a lot more, I think. I did not. Did you not? No. I did the opposite. I'm yeah. after lashing on about 400 pounds. Not at all, not but at all. I'm, I, that's fine. I, I can't bring myself to care. So someday I will, and then I will start really eating healthily, but just not today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some comments. Uh, uh, hi, Jack. Uh, there's no song you cannot sing. Oh, thanks very much. True. That's a wonderful gift. Thanks for sharing with the world. So uh, if you um, keep sending in your messages, everybody, and uh, Anna McParland, interesting lady, books helped us travel in our mind help us escape from our day-to-day -day reality. And that's what music and books are for, yeah. So What If I'm Broken is the name of the book. I must for all Luke fans. Oh, Luke fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have Anna's book, but I've not started to read it yet. You'll have to get on, on to that, Mags. Um, Carrie Louise Darby, I have to go great voice. Um, so yeah, so thanks for sending in your, all your messages. And uh, I have some other ones here. Hi, Jack. During COVID, thankfully, I didn't stop working as I work in retail. So, yes, 
one of the lucky ones. But I would worry every day for my family, afraid I might bring mm. COVID into the house, Frank Harris. Uh, well, thanks for that one, Frank. Um, so well, uh, I'm going to run next door and uh, sing uh, you one of the ones off Metropolis Blue, When the Moon is High, with the amazing recentering ensemble. And this is how you can get your, your postcards, or, or how you can send us your postcards from the edge. So keep sending them in, folks. I'll go sing it. Hi, this is Jack Lukeman, and I'm looking for your pandemic stories for my new web show, Postcards from the Edge. Please send me your poems, songs, messages, videos, or even just a request digitally. Tag your content online with hashtag JackLPostcards or send a message to any of the accounts shown here. To post your postcards free of charge, send them to Postcards from the Edge, P.O. Box 13420, Free Post, FDN 7530, Dublin 2. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Derry Cronin on the piano, please. A round of applause. Anybody out there? On the harp, Siobhan Buckley, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it going there. Tim Doyle here on the violin. So 
Wow, all right. That's a big old tune, When the Moon is High from Metropolis Blue. Thanks to all the marvelous musicians playing with me here. I've got some postcards here. News just in, Leo is very talented, talented and as a result, he is now being captured in Jack's phone. Free Leo from Thomas Quinn. Nice one, Thomas. <laughs> Lovely, now I'm relaxed. Feel like I'm lying on a thou thousands of bees, Thomas Quinn as well. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. Uh, enjoy the bee massage. Hi, Jack. From China, I, from China, yeah. I haven't seen my family in two years because of COVID. Oh my God, it's been a lonely time for me on my own. I heard your music on YouTube. I love it. 
got me through some tough times. Oh. Aoife, thanks a million, Aoife. Hope you're doing well and cool. you see everybody soon. Um, thanks, Jack. Wow, what a series. Best of luck. And thank you for the music. I uh, want to hear more of your music. I was alone in my apartment during COVID and uh, just me and my cat, Zeus. Yeah, myself and Anna were just talking about some of the places we lived in Dublin, you know, over the, w w years ago and how it would have been uncool. Been trapped <laughs> would have been sharing, really uncool. Sharing <laughs> communal toilets and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, we were just talking about uh, one time I had to. Uh, leg it from a house I was in because there was a rat in it and I, I, Anna had a better place up the road <laughs> so we went up and stayed up there for the night until we uh, found freaked it. like and two little until, girls until, until we knew that the rat was gone anyway <laughs> uh, watch postcards from the edge brilliant I caught COVID in the early stages when I was isolating mm -hmm. uh, it was rough going but Manny had it uh, a lot worse Brilliant series, love the piece on the Muslim Sisters of Era. Thanks, Jane. Thanks a million. Uh, do you have any characters? Have I do. I have a falter from Switzerland, loving the show, Jason McSweeney. I have a big kiss and a hello from Nice. And that's Elsie van Kirkhoven. Um, and then I'm streaming this on the TV. Bad luck for my hubby. It's Lukeman TV tonight. That's Anne Marie oh, okay. uh, McGee. And then I've got tickets sorted for the three arena. Yay, oh. Mira Noonan. And tickets bought November next year. Can't Excellent. wait, can't come quick enough. Mary Cullen. Excellent. Well, thanks a million, Anna. Thanks for uh, coming along tonight. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. Needless to say, we always have a great laugh. And uh, next week, we're going to be talking about diversity and inclusion. So please send in your comments, and your, uh, your postcards and texts to Jack L. Uh, hashtag Jack L. Postcards, if you put that hashtag on it, we'll be able to find them on all the various uh, social media platforms. So um, so um, that's it, I'm gonna go off on that. So oh, here's, here's another one, here's a good one actually. I watched your online gigs during COVID. I noticed you played the ukulele, so I bought one online and started to learn to play it. Are there any online classes you recommend? Well, there's loads of ukulele stuff online. I actually play the ukulele upside down. I'm left-handed, but I, it's very hard to get an upside down ukulele. This is very important information. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, if you want to see one of the wonders of the world, see me playing the ukulele upside down at my shows. Um, hi, Jack. COVID was hard for me, like everyone else. Uh, I haven't seen my grandchildren in two years, but I'm hoping to get to Australia for Christmas. But it's touch and go, fingers crossed, Mark. Um, well, th thanks for all your messages and keep sending them in because if we can't read them this week, we'll read them next week. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. And obviously this will be stay alive so people can watch it during the week. A lot of people watch it afterwards and it's on uh, YouTube also and also on jacklukeman.com. So thanks a million, Anna. You're Thank welcome, you so amigo. much. I'm going to make my way back to the stage. So uh, if you would be kind enough to read out some comments that have come in. Big thanks to uh, everybody working on the show here. Um, tonight uh, from another avenue and uh, a big thanks to everybody who bought tickets to the three arena and I'm on the hot press uh, cover um, on this this uh, oh, week's edition so thanks to you to hot press for the privilege of uh, being on their cover um, I've had the privilege a few times so always a thrill so good night from me and thanks for watching and look after yourselves I leave you with Anna uh, who's gonna read you some uh, <laughs> postcards and I'll see you all next week I'm going off to sing a song. Thanks a million Anna. See you amigo. So the challenge of lockdown morphed into the wonders of nature for me instead of looking at the clips on the dart and to work every day now I explore them in person. I'm so lucky to live between the mountains and the sea and that's Siobhan. And this has got ridiculously qualified during lockdown. Certified crystal practitioner and life coach, soon to be an L NLP practitioner. So use the time not sitting in airports waiting on flights to Dublin quite well. And that's Nicola Horsley. And that's life. Great song for life after lockdown. Jackie McSweeney. And now I think we're heading over to Jack. See you later. On Raglan Road Of an autumn day I saw her first And knew That her dark hair Would weave a snare
that I might want to rule. I saw the danger and I passed along the enchanted way. And I said, let grief be a fallen leaf at the dawning of the day. On Grafton Street in November, we tripped lightly along the ledge of a deep ravine where can be seen true worth of passion's pledge. The queen of hearts still making tarts and I not making hail For I love too much And by such and such Is happiness thrown away I gave her gifts of the mind I gave her the secret sign that's known to artists who have known true gods of sound and stone and words and tint without a stint I gave her popes to say With her own name there And her own dark hair Like clouds over fields of May On a quiet street where all ghosts meet, I see her walking now. Away from me, so hurriedly, my reason must allow. That I have loved not as I should. Oh, creature made a clay. When the angel woos, the clay he lose his wings. At the dawn oh, day. I got me a plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. Comes in colors pink and pleasant, glows in the dark cause it's iridescent. Take it with you when you travel far. Get yourself a sweet Madonna dressed in rhinestones Sitting on a pedestal of abalone shell 
Going ninety, I ain't scary, cause I got the Virgin Mary assuring me that I won't go to hell. Yeah, I don't care if it rains or freezes, as long as I got me a plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. Comes in colors pink and pleasant, glows in the dark cause it's iridescent. Take it with you when you travel far. Get yourself a sweet Madonna dressed in rhinestones, sitting on a pedestal where baloney shells. Going 90, I ain't scary, cause I got the Virgin Mary assuring me that I won't go to hell. 